So yeah, when you think about AEW, you know, in their bubble and in their history, they're in a pretty good space right now. All Out, from some reports that I'm seeing at least at the moment, you know, was an incredibly successful pay-per-view for the company, easily doing its best buy rate, which isn't a surprise, but maybe the level of buy rate that it did was a surprise, uh, in a good way. Uh, And then you look at Wednesday and Dynamite, and even though I thought the show was somewhat of miss, and even though I thought, you know, eh, um, could have done better, you know, it really didn't matter in terms of the viewership. They, it was, their, I believe, their second most watched episode to date in company history behind the opener um, on October 2nd, 2019. So the CM Punk, Adam Cole, Brian Danielson trifecta, like, has paid off a little bit. Certainly hasn't been landscape changing or... A seismic shift or anything, but they did beat Raw in 18 to 49 viewership in that demo for the first time. So, again, good stuff. So, important, imagine when, when you're rolling, you want to keep on rolling and keep on putting out the hits. We'll see how Rampage does in terms of the viewership this week. It was okay. And I'm trying to think of the fact that SmackDown was just so much better this week. It had two hours, it was in MSG, it was a live show, whereas this Rampage, we all know, was taped on Wednesday after Dynamite, so crowd wasn't quite as hot. Like, you're looking in the main event, you see Pillman's family's wearing the same shit that they were wearing on Wednesday. You're like, either you don't watch your ass in Cincinnati, or you know what's taped like. So, going into it with a little bit of lower expectations, and, you know, they still did some good things, but... It just wasn't going to live up to SmackDown. So I'm trying to call out that initial bias right here of for some of you that maybe really had enjoyed this show. Um, when you hear me talk about some of the things, probably won't be as glowing in some cases as maybe I could be or should be because it was just the inferior show tonight. Although I still love the concept of what they're doing here. I still love the fact that it's on one for one hour and we get in, we get out. It's kind of got a bit of a standard format and then you move the hell on. That was really good. Um... You kick off the show with Pac versus Andrade, and this was a match that people were looking forward to. This was a match that was supposed to happen on the pay-per-view last Sunday until it didn't. Uh, And this match, you know, lived up the expectations of people thinking it was going to be pretty good if it was on pay-per-view. It was a pretty good match. It really was. The finish was stupid as hell and really cheap. And you've got Andrade turning on Chavo Guerrero already, I guess. You're trying to set up to, now this is where you bring in Ric Flair to manage him? Okay, then. Like, let's get serious here. Like, so far what you've done with Andrade has been the shits. Like, do not try to spin this. Do not try to act like he's been featured well. Do not act like AEW's done a good job here. They have not. But if all of a sudden you're talking about you're aligning him with Ric Flair, Ric Flair potentially being his manager, like if that's what you're doing here with him turning on Chavo, you're opening up the door for that, then yes, sign me up for that. And it instantly elevates the profile of an Andrade significantly within the AEW construct. But like I said, back to the match. The match was really good. The finish was stupid. But I guess you technically have an excuse to have another one. So that's cool. You come back, and it's Darby Allen and Sting in the ring with Tony Savane. And I I think one of my Twitter followers mentioned it too, because I noticed it as I was watching it, but I want to make sure that they get credit for, like, really calling this out. It almost seems like Darby Allen started his promo and then maybe fucked up so bad that they started it over or they jumped to something else. It was really weird. Um, But he said something, and he tried to come across looking good here, but yeah, like this forum for him to talk doesn't work. The the pre-recorded video packages, that's where it makes more sense. He can be more mysterious and he could be more intimidating and cool in that light. Here, nah. And especially when Sting grabs the mic, like Darby Allen's trying to do something and then Sting just decides he's going to be what a superstar is supposed to be. Like there's personality and there's charisma And I'm saying it, and I'm saying it now. There is still time, Sting. There is still time for Sting versus CM Punk at Bow for Glory 
Come on, guys. Don't be scared of the magnificence. Don't be frightened by the awesomeness. Just do it. Sign on the line that is dotted, you sons of bitches. CM Punk versus Sting. Sting versus CM Punk at Bound for Glory. You've got to do it. You've got to do it. This could be the match that saves Impact Wrestling. This could be so many things. And just more importantly, if all these other AEW fans could sit there and be selfish and be like, I don't want this company to grow because I like my wrestling and that's all that matters. It doesn't matter if they get more fans or they can get more viewership or they can potentially get an even better TV deal and sell more merchandise, which means all the talent and everybody makes more fucking money. I'm a selfish cocksucker, so I don't give a shit. At least when I'm a selfish ass, I tend to gravitate towards things that will be more likely to draw money. So I guess I get to be selfish too. Give me Sting versus CM Punk and Bound for Glory and do it now. <laughs> Especially if we get Joker Sting. <laughs> yes! Into my veins! One thing AEW does really well, generally, are these video packages. Like, really big league, well structured, well organized, tell a really good story. Um, they do them on a WWE type of level. It's not about a comparison here, but it is about me illustrating the fact that this is a big league thing that they do, and they do it really, really well. And this was better, what Adam Cole did here, even in the short time that he was talking, than what you did on Wednesday night, where he said something, and then he just kind of blended into the fucking background. I noticed, once again, he didn't mention anything about the Good Brothers. Like, keep that shtick up, because they deserve it. And Brian Danielson, you know, same type of thing. Um, this video package worked really well. Really, really worked really well. What didn't work really well, though, was this Trios Divas tag match. And I said it right. This was hot, steaming shit. It was way too goddamn long. Instead of putting people in there that have business with a Dr. Britt Baker, you know, somebody like, oh, I don't know, a Thunder Rosa, or somebody like, oh, I don't know, a Red Velvet. We put in a fucking Riho. Riho, really? Like, I get maybe there's some story there, but nobody gives a shit. Why do people like Rio? Like, she should actually be really stiff in the ring, because if she was, it would look a lot better than the bullshit that she does, and she still won't hurt any damn buddy. Like, this should not be fantasy fuck-around time. These ladies are going to be in the ring. They should be able to do some legit shit that looks legit. Her fucking flailing kicks as Rebels standing there just taking them looking like a jackass. And the kicks barely doing anything. Like, they look stupid. Stop pumping up this crap like it's good. It sucks. Because Rio fucking sucks. This is another Kenny Omega signature classic right here. This was a Divas tag match. Rio stinks, Ruby Soho stinks, Botchlander, need I say anymore? This match was long, it was dull, and it was boring, and the best part about it is that it's fucking done, and I never ever have to watch it ever again. Get it the hell out of the way, and let's get to the main event, which was a big spot for Brian Pillman Jr. You're the hometown guy, you're going to be main eventing one of the cable TV shows for AEW? Like, this is not a small thing. And you got the return of Max Caster here, so obviously he's going to be in a place to do the job. Here's the acclaim. He does his rap beforehand, and he's talking about Joe Burrow's knee and etc. Like, you know, talking about Skyline Chili looks like <laughs> and Anthony Bowens cuts him off. At what point in time do we start paying more attention to Anthony Bowens and his potential? Seriously. I mean, that dude looks legit. And the shit that he does is so smooth and crisp. Like, there's something there. Caster's got the personality and the, the mic stuff right now, maybe, but yeah, he's not the only one that should matter here. Both of these guys should matter. They should absolutely matter. Uh, but the match itself was kind of mid, honestly. It was a mid-main event. You could tell that this was later on in the night on Wednesday because the crowd had already seen Brian Pillman earlier in the night in that awesome segment with MJF. He didn't quite have the same level of connection in terms of the heat with the Max Caster. It's almost like you're wondering if they were worried that Caster might get a bit of a pop for making an appearance here. Uh, but the match was okay. 
but Pillman goes over clean. He gets beat down by the acclaimed afterwards for the other hometown guy, John Moxley, to make the save. And that was nice. It was a nice feel-good moment and a good finish to the show. And at least a guy like a Brian Pillman Jr. is getting a spot here, you know, to show what he can do. Like, that's what you should be using this Rampage show for, if anything, to me. Dynamite your A show. Let's be clear, it's two hours. It gets more viewers. That's always should be the priority. But gamble. Experiment with Rampage. Put guys like Brian Pillman Jr. in this main event spot and see how they respond. See how the crowd responds. See how they do. See how they handle it. You know, the reality is, is he's probably not fully ready for prime time yet. Also, like, it's a shame that this company didn't push him going back months ago when that Dark Side of the Ring episode about his father came out. It would have been the right time to freaking do it. Because if you put him in this type of spot now... Like, the crowd probably wouldn't have cared if they had already seen this shit earlier in the night. They would have popped even more. Um, but a good spotlight and a good moment for him. But like I said, the match itself was honestly kind of mid. Um, so there were no truly spectacular things on this show. One of the three matches was the dog-awful drizzling shits. The main event was mid. The opener between Pac and Andrade was very good, but the finish was really dumb. Um, but... Again, not everyone's going to be a winner. Like I said, it was an okay show. And I'm trying not to drag it down too much, but it definitely f failed in comparison to SmackDown this week, but that's for a variety of different reasons. Judged on its own, which is what we should be judging this Rampage show on, it's still an hour. It goes by pretty quickly. You know, they didn't try to overload the show with too much shit, although they could have absolutely done away with the Divas tag match, so that would have been just fine with all of us. Um, and it is a Divas Tags. Don't call it Trios, AEW Women's Action. Like, this looked like shit. This was stupid. This looked exactly like some random-ass uh, Divas Tag match from a decade ago in WWE. Oh, we feel bad. we got to get the girls on there somewhere for two minutes. This is the type of shit that you get. Um, it was an okay effort this week. And I applaud them for putting Pillman Jr. in a spot, trying to make the hometown kid shine. Um, we'll see what they do next week. But this week was okay. 